Welcome back to Unraveled Game Thoughts. I am doing a new sound thing today. Uh, I got a new phone and unfortunately it does not have a microphone plug-in. So uh, I'm going to try this video out using uh, earbuds and hope that the sound carries well or cuts out stuff well or you know does what it's supposed to do we'll see how it works we'll try at least this video and then go from there but that being the sort of intro uh i have space explorers so let me try to hold this up here so you can kind of see the box it has if you're familiar with the art of food chain magnate it's kind of like that kind of art, but with a 50, uh, sorry, a space theme instead of a food chain theme to it. And this is a fairly easy game to learn and play. I will give you a little bit of a teach here and then we'll jump in with at least a few rounds. I don't know that I'll finish a whole game. Um, kind of playing two handed. We got left player, right player, and we'll see how that goes as we go along and you can decide in the comments if you really want to see the whole thing played out we can but I feel like just playing a round or three or six however many I feel motivated to play um, you will be able to get a good gist of the game and there is a solo version of the game that plays relatively uh, relatively similarly and uh, kind of triggers, the end game is just triggered kind of more of on a timer than, um, than as much uh, interacting with another player. But let's get into, what are we looking at? So first of all, we have a fantastic player aid that is a front and back. And this is particularly important because the different types of uh, scientists or engineers here, um, or I just, the workers. Uh, I think I, you would call them workers. Each of the cards represents a worker. Uh, they have various abilities on the bottom right. And this cheat sheet really gives does a good job of giving you kind of a large, helping you understand those abilities as the game goes on. Uh, most of them are fairly intuitive if you've played games with sort of a, I don't know, some of the elements will seem pretty uh, pretty easy to grasp and I could see not needing this for very long uh, after two or three plays but initially you kind of need it to get by and I'll read the abilities as they come up in the game so as I said we have the workers the blue represent engineers the green are testers the yellow are scientists red are builders and purple are astronauts those are the various workers that we have in the game. Each player will start with one card in hand. And obviously, I mean, you can see what these are here, but in an actual game, they would not know who has what. And then we have a display here. So one, um, I don't know if I'd call it unique, but an aspect of this game is that when you pay the cost to play a card, you can either play cards from your hand or directly from the display. So think Everdell with the community uh, field. Uh, you can just play right from that field. If you have the resources necessary to, to play the card, you can do that. Um, we also have five projects here at the top and they have symbols at the bottom of each project and those symbols are what are required to complete the project. So completing a project is not actually an action you take in a turn. Um, if at the end of your turn you qualify for one of the projects, you can complete it. Uh, you can only complete one project per turn, but uh, as long as you uh, meet the qualifications, you can take that project. So <clears throat> that is a uh, potential end game trigger is all five projects are completed. The other in-game trigger, and there are two, are uh, two, two total in-game triggers, one being the projects being completed, two being that if a player gets 12 workers in their tableau, then they will trigger the end game. 
Uh, the, the start playing token, the starting player token goes to a single player. So we're going to give it to left left uh, player here. And every player gets the same amount of turns in a given game. So if left player takes the turn that triggers the end game, right player will get one more turn and then the game will end. All right. So what are we looking at on these cards? Because that is largely what is driving the game. So if we look at a, the anatomy of a card, you will see that the uh, in the upper left-hand corner is how many card, how many points that card is worth at the end of the game when we do scoring. Just below that is a circular symbol. Those are what you're trying to collect in your tableau in order to complete the projects. And then under that are square icons that indicate the cost for that particular worker. Now, workers have various costs, uh, which are these symbols that you see at the top of the two different player tableaus, and each player will start with one of each of those symbols. The first uh, worker that you recruit into each um, section of your tableau will cost you the full cost of whatever that is. It's going to be a combination of these symbols and then every card, every worker you discard from your hand back to the, the main area here will then generate two symbols of your choice. Doesn't matter which symbols they are. It's almost like they're wild, but it'll give you two. And then you can play uh, whatever worker that you are trying to play if you have met the cost for that worker. So that's another thing you will see is that when you pay a worker to use it for two symbols, it goes to the common display here. Six is the standard number that are going to be out there. Uh, you will never reveal a new one as long as there are six or more, but you can have as many out there as it doesn't matter. It could go up to as high as players continue putting cards out there. Um, but a new card won't be drawn from the deck to replace one until it's back down below six. So that is sort of a general idea of the game. I think as I get into it here and explain what each side is doing, we're going to let uh, left player go first. It'll make more sense. So uh, right now I have this, uh, this would be a scientist in my hand, and she has a, an ability to, uh, if I look at my scientist uh, action here, uh, she gaining three research tokens, get three research tokens, Research icons, I wish I could read, research icons of any type instead of two for moving a card to the center from my hand. Now, the only reason that this is going to be active is if I actually pay for it and I have it in my tableau, and it's the top card in that section. So, uh, right, right now in my hand, this does nothing. Um, my real uh, desire is going to be, can I get a card into my tableau fairly quickly uh, given what I have here. Well, I, I like her ability. It's not bad, but one of the things with this game is there's a little back and forth between everything that you pay often gives those resources to your opponent. So uh, say I had two of these astronaut icons here. I don't, I don't have two, but say I was to have two, I would pay them to my opponent and then they would have those astronaut icons. All right. Um, so I think since this is not going to come into play anytime soon, I'm actually going to discard that to the main tableau for a total of two icons of my choice. I'm going to do it for two astronaut icons, and then I will gather this scientist, this engineer that gives me kind of a permanent icon, which I like that, into my tableau here. And I'm largely doing that because it's just an easy first play. I can start my tableau building. And it, I know it'll contribute to something up here. If I look at all of these projects, I can see that, that there are engineers in one, two. Two of the projects have engineers. Four of the projects have uh, testers. So I'm going to want to get some testers for sure. And uh, let's see, we've got scientists in one. So that's probably the one I, I need the least of. And she was a scientist. So, eh. and then two of them have the uh, builders. And I've got three with astronauts. So, so testers are going to be the big 
priority here in most cases. So then uh, the what I did on my turn was play a card. You're either going to take a card either from the top of the deck or from the display into your hand, cost nothing, or you're going to play a card. In this case, left player chose to play a card. So now it's right player's turn, and right player... Um, what do they want to do? They kind of want to build up toward a tester. Um, I think, let's see, what are these abilities? So this tester, you would pass two research icons to any one, to get any one skill icon you require to complete a project. That's not bad. This tester will give, gain one extra research icon of any type to use when recruiting a specialist with basic recruitment cost five or six. So getting the more expensive ones becomes a little easier with that one. And then this tester gives me two symbols. I'm pretty confident, actually I could. Two symbols would make getting future testers a lot cheaper. So if I discard this, uh, or rather return it to display and I use it for an astronaut and a uh, tester symbol, then all I need is an astronaut, a tester symbol, and an engineer symbol. So, oh, and I think, I kind of think they always go from the, well, I think you can use them for any symbol uh, moving up. So I should be able to pay these three symbols. The... I'll show you how another way that we end up paying for cards here in a minute. Uh, but for now, we're going to pay those. I think discarding those for any two symbols I want, I can go in any order or pay them in any order I want. And I will put that there. And then there are now still six cards. So back over to left player. Now, do I want to grab cards? Do I want to purchase something? Um, having this symbol is kind of helpful. I like it. Uh, is there anything it's going to help me pay for? Well, I could get this uh, red. What's his ability? Is his ability going to be powerful enough to make it worth it? After placing a specialist on top of this one, draw two cards. So he will give me two cards when I draw him. I like this red one too, uh, but I have to pay full cost for the red and I don't have anything to discard in my hand, and I don't have enough astronaut. Well, I have a permanent astronaut symbol here, so I would only need to pay one engineer and two astronaut symbols, and I could play this guy straight to my red category. And the reason I like that is because now I have another engineer symbol, and now I have two astronaut symbols, so it's made it a little easier to purchase things and then we, we actually fill this hole here because uh, there were less than five, less than six in the display. So, all right, so we have um, this, this one here, and I think uh, right-hand player is really gonna try to go hard and fast at these green cards so that they can then spread out and do other things. There's no ability here on this card largely because it gives two green symbols, and we're gonna actually use those to purchase a card now. So we want to get another one of these green cards. The question is, which one do we like? Um, this one helps us with projects, but I also don't want to cover up uh, this one later. If I wanna use it for a project, I'd rather be it be on top. We also have a green here, but I don't think we have enough to uh, purchase that one in particular with what we have. Um, we actually don't have enough to purchase this one either. This is the only one. Oh, we couldn't even purchase that because we don't have another green symbol. So we're kind of not able to get a green. Didn't realize that. Um, hmm. So... What we're going to do, I don't want to necessarily, let's see, let's see if there's another card we could possibly purchase from the center here that uses two of these or one of things that I have. 
I don't see anything. So what we're probably going to have to do is just get a card and I don't have a particular desire for any one of these. I just want a card. So I'm going to grab one from the top of the deck so that my opponent doesn't know what card I have. So they don't know if that's valuable to me or not. Uh, left player is going to see what they can do. They have a decent number of symbols here. Uh, we want to get some some uh, red ourselves. And actually, we or some green rather. And I think we want to get that green. So we have a blue engineer icon, so we don't need that. The astronaut icons won't help us on this one, so we're going to have to pay a uh, green and a red and get those, and that's going to put another card out here. All right. Uh, ooh, that's, that's not a bad card. That gives a, a good amount of symbols to what we're trying to do. And in fact, I think uh, I like, uh, right player likes that that gives uh, some symbols, helps pay the cost of cards, sees that left player is getting away with getting cards pretty easily. And only one yellow card is needed for any project up here. So uh, right player is going to go ahead and discard this one and grab this one. And that's going to use two symbols toward this project. Uh, so he'll take out those two symbols and uh, pass these red ones over here. And that will go there. And then we'll scoot these down to be our six cards. So now it's left player's turn. Uh, left player might, can they go after that? They aren't going to get away with that. Uh, we have three of those we would need, but we don't have enough for it. Uh, could we get another blue? And we don't have enough for that. So looking at the symbology here, we're not able to use what we have to actually purchase a particular card. Um, let's, I don't think we have enough to get a project done, but I'm double checking just to make sure. Yeah, nothing there. Cause this has the ability of, I can give two, two things to my opponent and then I could use it as a symbol. You can only use each power once per turn. Um, oh, and we do have these. I'm not paying attention to these symbols down here which is two astronaut icons and an engineer icon, which we would still need an astronaut there. Yeah, I don't see anything we can functionally uh, purchase. Uh, we would still need an engineer icon on that one. Oh, I think we could. We could get this red. But if we did, we'd cover up our icons there, which would not be very good. Um, so I think we're gonna just gonna blind draw a card and see if we can use it for resources later or uh, we'll figure something out. So now it is right player's turn. Um, again, they're trying to get some green here, uh, but now they have two icons available to them to purchase a card an astronaut and a, uh, what is that one? A builder, astronaut and a builder icon. So is there something that we could easily play here? Astronaut and builder, I don't see anything super easy. So I think they're going to blind draw. Uh, we got an astronaut there and we're not going after a lot of yellow. This one has a, uh, the end game value there is for every yellow card we have, for every uh, scientist, we would get one point at the end of the game. Well, that's not terribly, uh, we're not gonna be going after a lot of yellow cards. And so probably this will be used for resources uh, pretty quickly. All right, so left player is gonna go and this has a couple, this is a yellow card that has a couple of nice engineering symbols. That wouldn't be too bad to play. 
that would really load us up with a lot of symbology, which would be pretty cool. Um, the question is, we don't have, I think, enough resources to just outright pull a card um, to our side. So I think we're just going to get another card blind draw into our hand and see what we get. Uh, right player definitely doesn't feel the need for this card and is going to look over here for something that has a useful ability. Uh, this is not bad. And the catch is we would need one of these and two of these. And then we'd have to pay one engineer and one astrodot. And then we could pay these two and this to that player and we could get this red card into our tableau. All right, and that gives us, if we play a card on top of this card, I believe, let's double check that. After placing a specialist on top of this one, we're gonna get to draw two cards. Well, that's, that's pretty helpful. Um, so we're probably gonna do that pretty soon. All right, now, left player has some good cards that they want to get into play. Uh, this can be a, here's an example, Let's see if I can hold this up to the camera. It's a double symbol, but it's got a green and a red, so I could put it in my red or my green area, and it, it would help, but I, it, but it gives, so it gives me two symbols, which will help with cost. Green is probably going to be the most helpful, I think, uh, if I can get that there. And I already have one symbol, so I'd only need two more symbols. That's fine. But I kind of like this one. has to go in my yellow. I need one yellow. And for this one, I need a astronaut and two uh, engineer symbols. So I'm going to pay those. But now I am... Oh, I had two astronaut symbols, so I actually didn't have to pay that. I had one engineer symbol... So I only had to pay one engineer. So that's how that would have gone. I didn't forgot my symbols down there. And that might be one of the hardest things with this game is just keeping up with the symbols. Now I'm doing it for two players kind of simultaneously, which might make it a little harder on my brain than I, it normally would be. But uh, that is, I think with just, if you're just managing your own tableau, it's not so bad. Um, so now we're on right player and I might... Uh, end my uh my uh presentation here uh after right player but let me see what we think right player would do no cards in hand has two symbols and if we play somebody on red we get to draw two cards which would be fabulous which this is the only one and now i can give you a really good example of how as you play cards on your tableau they get less expensive i finally have one here i can actually play so I want to play a card on this red here, partly because when I do, I get to draw two cards and I can draw them from here or from here. So I'm going to play this one and this costs two uh, testers, two tester symbols. And I have one card in my red area already. So it has one red symbol. And so I can take the bottom cost you always take from the bottom up so i only have to pay one tester symbol now to play this here and i can just move that to my opponent and that will give me that tester symbol so now i have two so now playing my next red card here would actually allow me to take two off from the bottom up so basically any red card that only had two symbols would be free and I'd only be paying from whatever is above the first two. Um, now, because of the ability of this card, I get to draw two cards. So you can kind of start to see a little bit of the engine building that is going on here. Um, and I think, I know that this card is really just useful for paying for resources. I don't really need that card. Uh, and I want to get more green cards, and so I'm going to actually get both of those cards because that allows me to play one the next turn, and then we're going to build that back up to six, and then it'll be left player's turn, and I'll eventually finish this game, 
But as you can see, it's kind of both players kind of racing to see if they can build up enough of these symbols in the upper left to complete a project by the end of their turn. Um, and actually, oh, this one, this one's getting close to this one here because he has one green, well, he has two greens, but he has the one green, has the one yellow, and has two red. So only needs two more red to get that middle one. Um, as far as other ones that he might be close to, I don't see a lot. Uh, that's probably the closest one. Uh, left player is still building up across the board, only a few symbols, but has a lot of uh, symbols built up as far as the ability to per to get to recruit workers. So left player has really focused on recruiting workers. Right player has focused on trying to get the symbols to build up and also has now three symbols to recruit workers with which will prove to be helpful um, in uh, the next couple of turns. So we'll see uh, what uh, they do, but you have to like, actually you won't see because I'm about to end the video, <laughs> sorry. But uh, the, uh, the bat, there's, a, there's a good tension, I think, in how these symbols work together and are pretty, I mean, once you've played it a few times, fairly intuitive. I don't have to think as much about what the symbols mean and it becomes more and more of a race of using what you the few the back and forth of resources to try to build up toward those projects and end the game with hopefully the most points. Um, the other tension is as I add workers to my tableau, I'm also getting closer and closer to the 12 workers. So there's an added tension of if I get to 12 and trigger the end game before I'm ready, then I can, you know, that, that might not be good for me. So trying to figure out, you know, where to uh, adjust and pivot in recruiting workers, using the powers, trying to find uh, leveraging points in order to get a one up on your opponent uh, as you work toward the projects or as you work toward just making your tableau count toward a lot of points. So uh, right now, left player doesn't have any points in game except for what's at the top of their top left of their card. Uh, and neither does right player, honestly. Uh, this is the only point card we've really looked at in the game that requires the yellow uh, workers, which are not a high priority in this game. So uh, there are a couple other cards out here, actually one, that give end game points. Um, and that's actually not a bad one to get in a tableau. So uh, we might... Uh, see a chase for that pretty quick because if it's first in the blue section it's really valuable because the more cards you put on top of it the more points you can have so that is an introduction to space explorers i mean if you watch this and you just really want to see the full game uh post me a comment let me know um i will be happy to uh delve into it more if you're really interested in seeing the solo play out uh basically it's it becomes like every time the the automa gets a card that they don't have to pay resources for the cards but when they get one it moves uh the track or the different projects that have that particular uh science symbol in them they move up the track and if they get to the end of the track then the automa is considered to have gotten that uh project completed uh so you're trying to get those projects completed for yourself before the uh aut automatic player is doing uh, their thing. But uh, if you really wanna see that, let me know. I don't have currently a plan to uh, video the solo version because it's pretty similar to what I've just shown here. Um, but I will if, if there's a, a desire for folks to see that. Um, if you like this game, if you've played this game, uh, if you have comments on just what you saw here, then let me know. This is by uh, Yuri Zuravlev uh, is the designer of this one, and I did not look up other things he has done. And the art is by Alexi Kott. So it uh, looks like it's a crowd and crowd games um, is the producer, I think. So yeah, it's uh, I got this in a trade from uh, another uh, gaming friend. And it's, uh, it's, it was neat to try out. I think it's probably more of a filler game than anything else. 
uh, based on what I've seen, but it is pleasantly enjoyable. Um, it's got very simple mechanics and is pretty easy to engage. Uh, that's why I compare it to Res Arcana because you're using a lot of symbols to just kind of, uh, you know, you play some things off other things to generate points and then, you know, stack other symbols on cards and then get points that way in Res Arcana. And this feels, it has a similar feel to it. It's definitely not exactly the same, but uh, just the way those things move around. And I like the community, uh, sort of how all the stuff works together as a community. When you pay symbols, you pay them to your opponents. And if you have more opponents, I, I think you have to pay the uh, symbols in one direction when you start getting to three and four players. Let me see what we got here in the rules just to make sure I don't tell you wrong. Um, pay the required research tokens. Um, give the matching tokens from your supply to the player on your left. So in a, in a four, three or four player game, you're always going to be passing tokens to your left. So they'll just be going around this way. And then you actually have more projects out on the board. I think six for a three player game and seven for a four player game. But there you have it. Space Explorers. Thanks for watching. Uh, again, let me know if you have any comments and have a great afternoon.